So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you a really cool concept in GD script that is actually really powerful, but I don't see a lot of people um, actually talking about it. So hopefully it kind of brings this to light. Maybe you guys will learn something new. Um, I think it's pretty cool. So let's get right into it. So what I'm talking about is the bind method right here. And essentially what the bind method does is it returns a copy of a callable with one or more arguments bound to the callable. And I'm using bind here. What that means, it's, it's kind of like baking the argument arguments onto the method call. So you can see right here, I'm using the print s function. If you don't know, print s basically just adds spaces between all of the arguments that you're printing out. So it looks a bit nicer. And by calling bind on this, it's going to return a copy of print s with all of these different arguments essentially bound to it. Now, because it returns a copy of this, I can just use the call method at the end of the line, which is obviously just going to execute this. So if I run this script, you can see that it's going to print everything that I passed in inside of bind. Now you're probably thinking one of two things. You're either thinking, wow, that's really cool. Or why don't I just do like the typical print s call the function like this and directly stick my arguments in there. This is literally the same thing for this example. That's kind of what brings us to the next uh, main concept for binding. And that's the fact that whenever you bind arguments to a callable, it's like I said, essentially like baking those arguments onto the method call. So let's change this up a bit. Instead of calling this function that I'm getting here, I'm going to put it inside of a variable. So we're going to say var, uh, I'm going to call it actually custom print. And this is going to be my own function. I'm going to say it's a callable and set it equal to uh, print s. I don't know why it got rid of my print s here. And this is kind of cutting off of the screen. So let me zoom out. But we're essentially going to store the copy of print s in a variable. From here, I'm just going to call my custom print function. So we're going to say custom print dot call. And this is essentially the print function, right? So I can pass in any argument I'd like here, which is hello world. But if we run this, it might be a little different than you'd expect. So let's save, reload this. And now we're going to get hello world, but we're also getting bound argument number one and bound argument number two. So basically that means that these arguments here are attached to this callable. Whenever we call that function, it's going to basically append them to the argument list, which again, you're probably thinking either, wow, that's really cool. Or why on earth would you ever need to use that. So let's go over some reasons why you might want to use that. So switching over to my button example here. So I have a menu set up with a play button, settings button, quit button. And usually the way you would handle executing code on each of these buttons is maybe you would select the button, you would connect all the pressed signals to their own functions, and then you'd split up the code into three separate functions. But there's kind of a cool pattern you can do with this instead. So what I've done in this code is I'm getting a list of all my buttons. And then in the ready function, Function, I'm going to iterate through all of those buttons. And here's where the magic happens. So I'm basically connecting the pressed signal of each button to my react to button pressed function. And this way I can connect all of my buttons to the same function. So it's a bit more organized, but obviously like how would I tell the buttons apart? And that's where the bind comes in. So you can see I'm using bind on the signal connection here and essentially binding the button which is going to be the reference to the actual button node as an argument that's going to be passed through this function call. So really quick, what I'm doing here is just printing button uh, percent %s was pressed. Percent %s is obviously going to correspond to the name of my button node. So when I run this and I click one of the buttons, we should get it to print out the name of the button, which is pretty cool because again, they're all connected to the same function. So you can see play button was pressed, settings button was pressed, and quit button was pressed. So for this specific example with like the menu buttons, uh, you might prefer having separate functions to handle the different buttons instead of doing like a match statement here, because I guess if I did match which button uh, dot name, I would still have to type strings out, which would obviously not be ideal. But I did find a really cool use case for this pattern. I was making an application where instead of having something like this, where I have like play settings quit, I had more of a button set up like this, where you could add a value to, I guess we'll call it a score, but it was to basically pick a number where you'd enter in the data 
and I used buttons like this so that you could quickly just like add 10, add 100, like get up to the number really quickly, which actually worked pretty nicely. But with a pattern like this, I could do something a bit more unique. So instead of printing out button was pressed, let's say we're printing out adding percent s to score. And then instead of getting the button's name, let's do which button dot text. And this way we're going to print the amount that each button changes our score by. I don't have the score variable up, but you kind of get the picture. So you can now see if we click 10, we're adding 10 to the score, 100, we're adding 100, and obviously 1,000 is the same thing. But honestly, pretty cool pattern here because we're putting all the same logic in the same function without having to connect all of our buttons to different uh, functions like you typically would. So those are really the basics of binding. Now, some more important notes that aren't really covered in too much detail on the documentation. So a really important note is that whenever you actually bind an argument to a callable, it's essentially gonna lock in the value that you've bound to it. So in this example here, I have a message variable, which just contains a string, and I'm gonna bind that message to my print s function, which is kind of the same setup I had before with my custom print callable. So whenever we call this, like I'm doing when I click the accept key, it's going to basically call it with my message. So it should print out initial message. So let's see how that looks here. Hit enter, prints out initial message. Now, what I wanna do is go to my remote tab and because I've made this an export variable, I'm gonna change initial message to something like uh, test two. And what you might expect is whenever we click enter, it's gonna now print test two, but that's not actually the case. So I'm clicking enter here and it's still printing initial message. Even though we bound the function call with my message, which clearly now has a different value, the actual argument that is bound to it is gonna basically be baked in. So it won't actually update unless we like rebound the variable to it. And then one more thing that you guys kind of saw earlier, but whenever you bind arguments to a callable, they're always gonna be passed in as the last arguments. So kind of what you saw with the custom print, if I do end up calling it with like, hello world, obviously my message is going to be appended to the end of the arguments list, which means it's going to be printed out afterwards, which makes sense. Now, obviously, if you wanted to not have that behavior, you would just link it to another function that would like flip the arguments around. I've never really encountered a scenario where I'd have to use something like that. I did see someone using a function like that uh, when I was doing research for this video. So that'll be in the, the resources. There should be a link to that if you do want to check it out. But again, not a super common scenario you're gonna run into. Now, another really quick note, there's also a bind V method, which basically allows you to pass in arguments as an array. So I could have something like var my args, which is gonna be an array of strings and set this equal to like one, two, three. And then by passing this into the bind V method, it is basically just going to bind all of these array entries as separate arguments, which is pretty straightforward. And then lastly, we also have this last example, which is the unbind function. So this was obviously copied straight from the docs and foo is not a function that I have right now, but by using unbind, you basically pass in the number of arguments that you'd like to detach from a callable. So in this case, we're calling foo, which is a function with two arguments. We have one and two, but since we're unbinding one argument from it, it's basically just gonna delete the second argument here. So realistically, it's calling foo with one, which is pretty straightforward. And then this one is a bit more complex, but we are using bind like before. So on our foo function, we're going to bind a three and a four argument to that. But then when we call unbind with one argument, unbind isn't actually going to touch any of the arguments that we've bound to a callable. So it's only gonna to touch the arguments that we're actually calling it with through this call function. So basically it's unbinding one argument, which is gonna be this two here. So we're basically calling this with a one. And then since we've bound the three and the four here, those are going to be appended onto the arguments list. So it's gonna print uh, or output one, three, four, which I guess is pretty straightforward, but just thought I'd mention that because that's kind of a really subtle note that isn't super well documented. But that's about it for this video. One last thing, I guess, if you do prefer to make your signal connections through the inspector, like a madman, you can still pass all sorts of custom arguments and bind things just like you usually would through GDScript. So by connecting my pressed signal here, I could technically do the same setup by just checking this advanced 
checkbox down here, and then you can bind extra arguments here or unbind arguments uh, through this number right here. Now, I recommend doing all signal connections through code just because it makes your life a whole lot easier since uh, sometimes the Godot editor will bug out and just start, you know, disconnecting things. Realistically, do whatever you want. It's your game. But yeah, just pointing out that you can do it uh, through the editor if you want as well. Yeah, that's it for this video. So if you did learn something new or just enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like or check out some of the links below. Discord server link in the description and some other stuff that you can check out. And if you want more Godot content, then you can check out my latest video, which is right there or something. It's... You can't see my... There we go. It's up there. Anyways, thank you for watching, and I hope you guys have a great week. Bye.